Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. guys, it's the Awesome Cast 194. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron down here in the studio in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to get awesome talk tech, talk geek on this tax day. And that's where I just reminded some of you, you have some work to do tonight. Um, so uh, with me, as usual, is uh, the Dutters is back in the studio again. Hi. Hello. Hello. And straight from someplace that's probably going to be her awesome thing of the week. <laughs> something from the Verizon store. Could we'll find out. We'll find out what's in the bag here in a moment. Also, back with us on the line, although should be coming back soon to the studio, is the new daddy, the big chill, John Chilla. That's me. Yeah, I'll be back in studio next week. Um, so I'll be back on the couch. Dutters make me a little room. Of course, based on the fact that I'm probably coming back, Dutters not- will probably not be there. <laughs> yeah. Scared. They're scared. Um, and of course, you can find us. We're at awesomecast.com. Uh, you can also uh, drop us a line. We're over at uh, sorgatronmedia.com for the live stream. You can join us in the chat, just like guys like Chachi, Kill- Crazy. Why don't I want to call him Killer Cross? There's somebody that had like a weird <laughs> juggalo name back in the day that keeps reminding me of. Uh, Dirt is in there, of course. Father Spoon, uh, Mad Mike, Alex Cars, Kelly Kyle, Wheels, and others, of course, ready to get awesome and tell us how wrong we are. As- that's, that's right. There are our correctors. There are our our, our, um, our audible uh, 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 autocorrect out, out there, and they yell at us like in the movie show earlier. Uh, also, we're on Twitter at AwesomeCast. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on Google Plus, and uh, we're also uh, you can drop us a line at AwesomeCast.com/slash/SorgatronMedia, and we're on iTunes, Go- Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker. Uh, and more places, video and audio forums. So uh, tonight, let's get right to the awesome things of the week. What'd you get, Dutters? What'd you get? 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 <gasps> it's an iPhone. Now, you, what have you been rocking up until now? A Galaxy Nexus, which if you're not familiar with that, that was the original Galaxy from Samsung. Mm-hmm. Which is... Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize it was that old. Yeah, it's... Not the, yeah, we're up to the five now, and I had the original one. Wow. Uh, so why did you go iPhone? Oh, gosh. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, peer pressure. No. <laughs> um, can you see me better now? Yeah. Okay. Look, I'll sit up taller. I won't slouch. Um, now, I've been thinking about going with an iPhone for a while. I have never had an iPhone. I've been strictly Android uh, since pretty much smartphones came about. And uh, it was something I wanted to try the platform um, and kind of broaden my experiences because there was so much more out there for iPhone as far as apps and things go. And I, it's, like I said, a totally different experience for me. I still have my Samsung tablet, so I still have the best of essentially both worlds, the Android and the uh, iPhone. I'm pretty excited awesome. and scared, <laughs> terrified. <laughs> I made a phone call with it and sent some texts. So we know it does that. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's good. Um, so if anyone, if you'd like to talk about this, if see my little name down there, if you have any apps that I need to download, please feel free to tweet me and let me know what I need to download because I have no clue. <laughs> please help. <laughs> well, like I said, at least this was my experience when I picked up the, the my Nexus mm-hmm. for, for my tablet was, okay, I'm just going through my phone and seeing, is there a version of that for this? Since so much of my stuff is in the cloud and on social networks and stuff, I think generally it's it's fairly one to one. I w- I'm pretty from looking at it, it's it it seems pretty close. Like everything that I've used on here or on my um, Galaxy is, will be on there, which is nice. So it's almost to a point where you, you're almost not even going to know a difference. Um, you, uh, to be honest, this, the frightening thing is is the fact that there is only one button down here. I don't have a back button, which is already scared the heck out of me <laughs> because I'm like, how do I do this? What do I make more? How do I make more windows? How do I do? It's, it's been very elementary for me thus far. And mm-hmm. um, I'm kind of roughly feeling my way through it, but, but it should be okay. We'll, we'll have to check in with you from week to week and say, how's that coming? How are you adapting? <laughs> I'll just be sobbing. I can't handle this. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Chilla, do you have a, an awesome thing of the week here? 
I do have an awesome thing of the week, and I'm actually going to probably appease Krause here. Uh oh. <laughs> My awesome thing of the week is actually Microsoft making a huge comeback while we're on the topic of phones with Win Windows Phone 8.1. So this week they released their developer bits, which, if you are a registered developer, which is free, you don't have to wait for the carrier, and your device will automatically update. Hmm. In the update, there's they're they're kind of taking the best of both worlds, from what I'm seeing from the from the Android and, and the iOS world. Um, their contacts integration is actually leaps and bounds above anyone else's, um, from from what I've experienced personally with the uh, Windows Phone. I've played around with Krauses a, a whole bunch. Um, they added Cortana, which is a um, which is their answer to um, OK Google, Google Now, and uh, Siri, um, which is I, I haven't had a chance to really look at that, but it, but it looks pretty decent. And they actually used the woman from Halo that did the voice for Cortana. They actually used her voice for a lot of it, so so that's pretty impressive. Um, some of the other things I've seen on there, they have the, they have the quiet hours, um, which I'm a, I'm a fan of on iOS. I can kind of set times where I only want phone calls from certain people or certain texts from certain people. Um, if someone calls, I think it's two or more times within the same three to five minute period. Um, they will, um, it'll actually ring through. So if it's like an emergency and someone calls you twice. Um, they've added some more rows and, and columns to screen icons that, that it for, for high def screens. And if you're on a low def screen, it'll kind of do an override, um, which is nice. Um, so you can get more icons on that screen. Um, I, I'm just really impressed with, oh, they, they, they're leveraging kind of the Android concept of this, the swipe keyboard, which I actually got to test out and, and it was pretty pretty impressive um just all in all i mean they, they've kind of finally after years and years of of trying to or or not even playing in the smartphone game they've kind of they've kind of answered back with this phone update and then looking at the their other recent announcements of office for ipad um op options for um, lower cost off, op office subscriptions the Windows 8.1 update one, which I know you haven't run yet, but I've actually been really, as a, as a person who's had to factory reset my Surface Pro um, three times and my <laughs> Windows RT tablet twice, um, it was nice to see an update that didn't completely break my device and actually adapts well to the concept of, of having a keyboard, not having a keyboard, having a keyboard flip back. It actually kind of adapts to that. Um, they've had some Xbox One updates that have come out that, that, that'll that kind of lead us to believe that they'll be integrating all the platforms. Um, they're moving to a, especially with Windows Phone 8.1, they're moving to a develop once, uh, deploy to many. So their new their new development kit, I don't know if we covered it yesterday, last week with I think, Build. I think we did um, a little bit. Yeah, I think we did. That, that's pretty impressive that they're, they're, they're going down that route. And then Cortana... Seeing it on Windows Phone 8.1, I'm hoping it comes, and, and they said it's going to come to everything else. So I just think it's, it's, it's a major leap forward for what Microsoft had even a year ago as to where they're at today. I mean, when you talk about, uh, um, Thutter's talking about going from Android to Apple, you kind of get that one-to-one -one application world where... Yeah, you had Vine on Android. You can get Vine on iOS. You had you had Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and and all the same apps are are, are there. You're starting to really see that come around on Windows Phone. So I'm just really impressed with what they've done, and I hope they continue to drive forward. I think you're going to see, I think you're going to see some people probably attempt to replatform. Um, they're picking up things that we're, we've been used to for for years with. If I bookmark something on my my tablet or my desktop, it now shows up on my phone. Um, so I, I'm just really impressed with where they've gone, and I hope by them moving forward, I hope it forces IO, iOS and um, Android to, to come along. They they have a notification screen now. 
And, and when we say, well, when I say this, I know everyone's probably saying, well, I've, I've had that on my Android or I've had that on my iPhone. I, I feel like they've caught up and, and they're surpassing the different vendors within their, in their own way. So mm -hmm. the one thing that I really like is, is that all of the Cortana features that, that you're used to the Google now where it can kind of scroll your email or it can, it, it can query your email and kind of bring back that data or with Siri, you ask a question, it goes out and grabs that data from Apple, um, transitions that data and brings it back to you. Uh, Cortana is actually working completely on the device. So it's not like Microsoft's really on their back end has to get the data and then bring it forward. One of the examples I think they gave uh, was, remind me when I call my sister to ask her about her dog or something like that. Mm -hmm. And when the person dialed the phone and the, the phone call connected, there was like a, a, a beep and, and the pop-up that showed them or the person being reminded to do whatever. So we're, we're used to location-based reminders. They can also, they can do location, but they can also base it on certain other by action, tasks. By action, and, yeah. I mean, it sounds like, from what I'm yeah. hearing, is, is Cortana is going to be, Cortana is going to be uh, taking another side of, you know, you know how it how it interacts with your phone uh, than than both Google Now and Siri is. Uh, so it's kind of it's interesting because now it's like, well, maybe I want to use a Windows phone because it does it this way, you know. Yeah, and and, and the other interesting thing is that they've already publicized that Cortana API, mm -hmm. so anybody in their apps can build their app to integrate. So Siri obviously can only do what Siri can do, and I can't say Siri post the last picture I took to Instagram. Yeah, um, or or whatnot. And now, because Facebook accounts and Twitter accounts are built into the then, o, at the OS level, but you then, can do posts to them. But anybody can now write an app. Yeah, and also, like, I feel like uh, it, maybe it's just because it's on a tablet. Maybe I don't use it enough. But I feel like the Google Now isn't phone based as much. You know, it's more talking to Google and getting information rather than making something happen. If it's a Google service, I mean, I think you can set reminders and stuff, but I, I, is there a lot of, I don't know if there's a lot of like open an app or something like that, or a lot of that contextual do this with my device kind of stuff. You're mm -hmm. saying there's not, you're shaking your head. No, that it's like, for example, today I was looking for Verizon waterfront. I wanted directions mm -hmm. and I, I had asked Google now like several times and several variations of the words to try to get me directions from here to there. And mm -hmm. it was just giving me the link to, Oh, here's the store information. Here's yeah, this information. Yeah. And it doesn't consistently across the board. Sometimes it will come up with store hours. Um, I've with, I think Rite Aid or CVS, I've had to come up with store, store hours, but not consistently across the board has it come up with the information that I wanted or That's, the commands that I wanted. It, 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 yeah, it, it, like for me, it's always been like, like you know, you know, just driving around, you know, with, with Missy and be like, uh, you know, hey, ask it to do this thing, and and you you'll go to ask Siri. You got to think: is it an informational thing that I'm asking about? And if it's not sports scores, movies, or X. If a Siri, it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, versus, you know, okay, I want something that's information. Go to Google Now. Go open up your Google Now app if you're on on the phone, for instance. Um, so you kind of kind of give a second thought to it. And I feel like like, it, and it feels like maybe you know, of course, you have the iPhone. Or I'm sorry, the Windows Phone. It's probably if they don't already going to have a Google Now component with a Google app, so you'll have that as well. Um, but but yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting to see how all these kind of develop in three different ways, and hopefully it's going to make all of them better in the long, in the long run. I'm, I'm glad to see Windows Phone coming up. You and know? one of the other things I forgot to mention too, uh, and you can mention it in the in the podcast going forward, is now in their pod, they've broken their podcast app out of their audio app, uh, following Apple's lead on that. Mm -hmm. um, now there's a search feature and the search feature uses Bing and Bing powers all the podcast searching. And interestingly enough, if you search awesome cast, it, I think it's the second hit is all of the awesome cast. Um, really? Yeah. So you, you were automatically indexed <laughs> for, for podcasts. So we haven't even done anything and we're already in there. Yep. Um, Alex Carr's, uh, while we're talking about kind of speech recognition, and I saw this because the one rare time that I'm watching television, this ad came up, actually. Has anybody seen the Gary Busey uh, <laughs> Amazon Fire TV ad? 
<laughs> or apparent- I, I have not, but um, I'm interested in seeing that. <laughs> I, I didn't realize Fire so, had a voice component. Yeah, it does. Um, so it's basically the commercial is, I like to talk to things, and he talks to the lamp. And then he finally, like, and then he tries talking to a Roku box. Thank you, bitch, for being here. <laughs> Frustrating when things don't listen, especially high tech things. Find Gary Busey. Find Gary Busey. And it's a Roku, and it's not doing anything. But this new Amazon Fire TV listens to me and does exactly what I say. Gary Busey. And point break, number one hit. <laughs> and it, even, it even understands his drunk slurs. He even understands his drunk slurs, so maybe he'll actually understand Australian. Um, yeah, it, that's that's interesting, and I think that's going to be a killer feature for them. And I think it's, other than the games, I think it's the only thing that really makes it kind of stand apart from a Roku. Or unless you're just very, very already baked into the Amazon ecosystem there. Um, so I'm interested to see how the voice works on that. I haven't really heard much for reaction so oh we're also number two in bing searches says alex Ooh. for this one of, one of the other the, the other things that i found interesting that i i've been doing a little bit of research on tvs and because we're we're going to try to redo or finish our basement and i'm going to need a tv for down there um one of the things i've seen samsung starting to do and i think lg starting to do it and i'm seeing a couple other vendors they're putting the mic in their remote but more importantly to me there's a component on the back of the TV that looks probably about the size of the Kindle or the Amazon Fire box mm-hmm. or like an Apple TV. And it actually like clips into the back of the TV and it's the guts of the smart TV side of the TV. So things like voice search then become upgradable. The processor, like my my uh my samsung tv i think has like a a dual core um arm pro gigahertz arm processor all of those guts of the tv will be upgradable so i think voice interaction with your tv is going to be heavily upcoming microsoft's going to play big on it obviously amazon's playing big on it i think it's 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 definitely going to be an extension into the tv realm Alex just yelled at his phone and it couldn't find Gary Busey. <laughs> Putting that out there. Awesome. So we'll keep a look at that. The phone wars continue. I'm, I'm kind of digging it. Uh, so uh, it's tax day. Everybody get their taxes done. Probably not last night like I did. Um, I, I just want to say that I my my taxes were filed on February 8th. Oh, wow. Um, so, oh, yeah, I was, I was an early bird. Which was look nice at you. Too. Making the rest of us look bad. Nerd. Man. <laughs> I knew somebody that uh, will remain nameless that was ch- check doing his today, and it sounds like it's tradition. Um, so there's that. Well, I, you know, I, so I run, I run my own business, so that can get complicated. Um, and although, and, and it's taken a couple years to actually figure out all the things I should be writing up, so I don't completely screw myself over. Um, and uh, one big help for that um is well one my wife because she understands how to do these things uh but i've been using fresh books for the last couple years and it's kind of a reminder of like oh hey maybe some people should know about this um by the way i think i see a macho man figure in the background of this picture Mm -hmm. that's pretty awesome um it's an online accounting cloud accounting they call it um but I've been using it for, for invoicing, for expense tracking, all kinds of stuff. And, and kind of the additional, so when it comes tax time, I have a profit and loss sheet. And I know it was like, oh, wow, that's what I made from the business. Or that's what I grossed. And holy crap, I'm spending way too much on X, you know. Um, but on top of that, I've been using the apps that they've started coming out with. Uh, and you see a little bit here on the video is the actual time tracking. So it's like, okay, I want to be, look at, generally in the past, you're like, okay, that was pretty much an hour I spent with the client. So we'll just go ahead and mark that. But if it's something where, you know, I find myself in these, these tasks for clients where, well, that's something that's probably going to take you 10 minutes to do, but you need to, you know, you need to make sure that's in there. Bless you. Um, <laughs> you're hiding the well um so it's really nice to go in there actually just hit start on it 
and then you can record that through, um, uh, you know, kind of more, you know, more accurately uh, to make sure, you know, you're not screwing over them or, you know, back and forth and, and whatnot. Uh, so uh, it's actually free for the first three clients, and that's how I actually uh, started with this when I heard about it, um, because I had just like a handful of clients I had outside of my day job. Um, and I think it's, I don't know, I think I paid 20 or 30 a month. Uh, now that, and that gives you up to like, I think 20 or 30 clients. I, I just hit the ceiling after like three years of using this uh, and paying for it. So, uh, so if you're doing, even if you're just doing a couple of those odd side jobs, like freelancing, I really, really recommend this. It's at freshbooks.com. Uh, I should really have an affiliate code for it <laughs> or something. If I do, maybe I'll throw it in the in the notes or something like that. Um, yeah, I don't know. They have, they have something, some kind of setup for that, I think. Um, for, uh, if they have recommendations, just mention me. So maybe I'll get credit. They, oh, they used to do, and they, they used to do fun um, promotions where uh, every, I think every week they will give somebody that signs up new a birthday cake. Ooh. So and somebody got somebody won a cake on a podcast. I was listening to and said it was really good. They didn't skimp on the cake, so that's good to hear. So awesome! We have some more awesome things from you guys. Um, and speaking of cake, one's a food thing. <laughs> so tell me what what am I looking at here? Okay, brought, oh, oh no, it's it's melty. It's delicious. I don't know. Well, I went. I made a trip down to Sinful Sweets. I don't know if you've been down there. And they're the uh, Pen and Ninth. Yeah, 901 Penn Avenue, and they make delicious chocolate. I don't know if you can see this, but this is chocolate-covered bacon. And that, that's, that's here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, it's downtown. Uh, great local company. Love them. Uh, chocolate's amazing. I have brought Sorg with me a some chocolate-covered bacon and a chocolate-covered chili pepper. I have not tried the chili pepper. I've been warned repeatedly about the chili pepper, but I have not tried it. So we've we've agreed. Well, apparently it's been sitting on my hot laptop this whole time. <laughs> this is going to be messy. <laughs> uh, well, I have another one. You... <laughs> uh, no, no, I'll, I'll make this work. I'll 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 just kind of make this work, I guess. Grab, so, my drink. so you want me to kind of? You want to try, try the bacon first? Mmm, bacon. That was a lot better than I expected. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's definitely. I've had different chocolate covered bacon. It's my favorite. That was way better than I expected. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Talk. I'm eating. <laughs> uh, this is chocolate cake. <laughs> now, um, it's it, it's a great company, and they also do a lot of special orders. Um, we have we have a friend of the show, Baby K. Um, her mom cannot have milk products, and he's been able to order and create chocolate for her without milk, which has been fantastic for her. So she's been able to enjoy things like hot chocolate that she's never had before. Oh, now we're gonna do the chili pepper. You want me to do this first? Oh, you're going first. Oh, great. This will be fantastic. Oh my god. <laughs> that was quick. Is it real hot? That was quick. Uh-huh. Can you, can you, do you get the seeds in there? Is that what's in? Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> yow. So if you want to see, that's. <laughs> Go and eat it. Do you know what kind of pepper it is? A red pepper. Like, is it like, but like, I think red can be like habanero. It can be, there's a bunch of different peppers. I don't know. Red. Can you tell from that? Nah, I'm Ooh. not a pepper connoisseur. Holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap. That is hot. It's delicious, but it's so hot. <laughs> My mouth says stop eating it, but it's So can't. sinful sweets. <clears throat> Go check that out. Chill it. Give me something else to talk about while so, we recover. So while, while we're on the topic of food, and I forgot to put this in the show notes, so I just recently added it right above the Sinful Sweets PGH from Dutters. Um, there's a, there's a, some uh, privately owned coffee shops in the New York City area that have teamed up with an app developer, and you can actually subscribe to unlimited coffee all month long. Which for me, I mean, there's the more, I, I probably drink six cups of coffee throughout my work day. Mm. So $45 would definitely be a savings to me. And, and you can kind of go in to any one of these stores. From what I understand, it's if you're familiar with the, the Starbucks app or any one of those apps where you can kind of scan a barcode. Um, this will let you... Um, go in and you get unlimited coffee. I would love this. I wish I wish someone else would, even if even if Starbucks did this or 
any other coffee vendor, I would I would subscribe to this in a heartbeat. Now, because I found myself spending way too much money on coffee, I actually have K cups um, shipped direct to my to my desk at work. Oh wow! Uh, <laughs> because we I. I was running through all of our K cups at home and going to Starbucks is way too expensive six times a day. Um, so I, I have, I have the K cups right at my desk, but this would actually, for me, I go through, um, probably a little over a case, uh, probably almost two cases of K cups a month. Um, so this would actually be a cost savings even to the K-Cup type thing. And they do have some su subscription levels in here where I think the, the base $45 a month gets you um, mostly any type of coffee and tea. Um, at the $85 level, it gets you uh, espresso, Americano, cappuccino, lattes, macchiatos, iced coffee, blah, 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 blah. I'm not too interested in any of those. But the the coffee alone to me would be worth it. So anyone in Pittsburgh, um, Crazy Mocha, anybody, uh, please, please, Crazy Mocha, start so, something like this. I can't remember who's doing the Twitter right now for us, but please act Crazy Mocha on this one you know, with this <laughs> article. I mean, I, I actually stop my first stop off of the train in the morning as a Crazy Mocha in the tea station. Then it's to my desk. Then usually it's a K cup or or six before the end of the day. Sometimes with intermittent Starbucks trips in between. So this this would get me going back to wherever. There's there's a couple um, private coffee shops right around. I, I work in the UPMC building downtown. Um, there's a couple independent shops right around there that I'd be willing to walk across the street too so there's a good point in the chat room that uh starbucks would lose money on you <laughs> at this point. well no well no starbucks lost money on me when k cup when when i started when i switched to k cups because mm -hmm. i mean i with k cups i think they're about 80 cents a cup uh, give or take when you're when you're buying in mass quantity um whereas i mean i'm two dollars and 54 cents a trip to starbucks so, so they quickly lost out when I figured out how much money I could save a day, a week, a month, et cetera, um, just by m removing Starbucks and substituting in the K-Cups. So, so, so a side note, back to the sinful sweets, we started to discover that the chocolate-covered bacon actually soothes <laughs> the burning from the chocolate-covered uh, mm -hmm. other thing. <laughs> we're over here inhaling this we're thing. like we're like we're over here wiping our noses it's amazing yeah it's pretty serious so i'm not prepared for the next thing i'm sorry <laughs> i have to i have to admit i've already had to go to i forget <laughs> your iphone <laughs> awesome um we just got a bunch of awesome things here uh tell me what's going on with the simpsons stutters Ooh. You know, in August, they're coming to FXX. Yep. Starting with a 12-day marathon. Are they just showing Every, everything? Everything. Every single Simpsons episode. FXX back wow. I think last year bought every single episode of The Simpsons, and now they're going to show it in a 12-day Wait, did they marathon. have to, they really have to buy it? Because isn't FX, FXX Fox who owns Simpsons? I'm not sure about that, but I thought they had to pay for it. No, I wouldn't think they would have to pay for it because they they they, were, they have the rights to run it in syndication. I, I know it comes it now comes on after Seinfeld every night at midnight too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's all over the place. I wonder if this means we're going to see a less in syndication. I bet because mm. it, it's going to be on the app, and they're going to want to keep traffic heading towards that app. Mm -hmm. But I don't. They always cycle through. Like it's always like this channel gets this bunch of them i think mm -hmm. they do like kind of sell them in packs or something like that so thank you awesome cast tweeter <laughs> um so go check that out fx fxx i'm so out of the loop on this because i don't have cable so well there'll be an app soon enough i just in i August. just watch it on the hulu 
on the Hulus. Do you watch it on the Hulus? I watch it on the Hulus. <laughs> I just catch it up to it. I watched like three or four episodes from like this season on Hulu. So that's my way. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about VidStitch. So VidStitch, um, I was scrolling through um, Instagram the other day. And all of a sudden, I started seeing people's pictures. And I'm sure people are familiar with seeing a picture that's cut into maybe three or four frames and yeah. they, it's multiple pictures in the same picture. Well, I was scrolling right by it and, and I was like, wait, what was that? One of the frames was a video. So it was a still picture and it was like a, a long frame at the bottom for the, like the bottom half of the picture. And then the top was cut into, into two frames um, in half. And the one frame was animating and was a video with sound. And I'm like, what the heck is, it was really eye catching. So I'm like, I wonder how they did this. So I started Googling around and, and trying to find, find apps. And there, there, were, there were a bunch of people that had posted like ways of doing it in an animated GIF and, and doing different things. And then I found VidStitch, which um, is available. There's a free version on Google. There's a pay version on Google for VidStitch Pro. Um, there is one, I think there's only one version on iOS. No, they, got, I, they, got, they got both of them actually. Uh, okay. The iOS pro version is 99 cents. Whereas the Go Google version is $3. What's the difference? Between... I don't think anything. Really? What? <laughs> Probably just has ads or something. I'm downloading the free version oh, right the now. The free version of the free versus the pay. I, I, I'm guessing there's probably some extra frames or there's, there's extra of, of something. But um, and probably maybe advertising in the app, but uh, it, it's it's a pretty impressive way to get your content when being scrolled through relatively quickly. I mean, I, I go into Instagram and it's like okay. Bit Stitch, uh, Android, and iOS. You can put it on both of them now, Dutters. Oh, mm -hmm. I want to have so many videos and pictures and <laughs> out of control. It's <laughs> uh, amazing. I'm, I'm surprised. I'm surprised you haven't, based on tax day, I'm surprised you haven't brought up Google Glass. I, it's in the rundown. We're getting to it. We're <laughs> getting to it, Chilla. But well, we can do that now. Um, oh, wait, I got to put this. Yeah, the Google Glass. Google Glass time. There you go. Awkwardly on. Um, <laughs> it looks good. Sure, sure. So today, uh, or if you're, or previously, if you're listening to this uh, after we posted it, uh, yeah, it, the Google Glass is open to everybody to buy. I think I don't know why. You know, I, I, it feels like this is the last ditch to get a bunch of these units moved out before they do the final release version yeah like, I, I, I feel like in two months there's going to be an announcement which google io is coming up in july so july no whenever it is it's soon uh, it's Ju i think it's the end of june and i june. had to look that up for something that worked today. but still but still it, it, it's coming it, it, this is this is the this is the clearance before we go on uh i i, I feel like um but yeah if you get that in today it's still 1500 bucks um, I don't know. I, I think they sold it. Uh, I'm reading an article here. They sold out of the cotton color. Uh oh, um, almost immediately. Um, so I'm wondering. I'm I'm guessing now. Like I went out there at ten o'clock. It opened at nine a.m. Eastern Standard. Um.
think one is available. Now, they were doing, like, if you go back to last year, there was XC1, 2, 3, 4, you know, up through 12. There was one each month. This is the first update we've had this year. Yeah. And, and I've heard that, and I read somewhere today that when they move into this KitKat model, you're going to lose video calls. So I don't know how often you used video calls, and I don't know if it's something that we're talking about, like the, the the Hangout video calls. You think? I guess I I don't know. I want to plug this in and actually update it right now. I didn't I didn't read the fine print. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see if I can find an article. Um, I could probably move to a to another. So wait a minute, glass update. So here you go. Um, that twelve point one. Mm -hmm. You might as well just ignore that because um, glass update XE sixteen now rolling out. Really? First, you'll have to be. Oh, well, don't ignore it. First, you'll have to be <laughs> updated. You're to you're XE making me conflicted, Chilla. So so you have to go to twelve point one to get things prepped, so you can get to sixteen. Wow. Um, this brings the platform to KitKat and a handful of changes and new features. Um, we're looking at what's new. We'll tell you how it works for we'll anything worth reporting on. I'm really, I have to get lenses on this thing because it's just too, too annoying to try to wear like on top of my glasses. I've been like, you know, having like, like welts in my nose from, from like having them pile on and everything. It's just been way, way too uncomfortable to, to be using on a regular basis. So I'm looking at those prescriptions, see if I can swing it. But, yeah, we'll see. Just... Too bad Dutters was a Verizon uh, customer. You could have used her Nexus, her Nexus um, with your glass mm. on AT and T. Well, actually, they well we've talked about it on here the the My Glass app on the phone actually does the screencast and everything now. Oh, there's the my there's my glass for mm -hmm. iOS now. Yeah, yeah, it it's, oh, wow. it, it, it does most of the features. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it, they've, I think they've pretty much gotten parody as far as that goes. I think some of the SMS features aren't working. I think the GPS stuff was working. Um, so, I mean, it's coming along. I'm actually oh, trying oh. to update it on the screencast since I have to plug it in all the way over there. Um, awesome. So we actually got an email this week, guys. Uh, Alex Cars is always sending this stuff over. Uh, he says, uh, I was going to make a list of all the techie things. Uh, people can buy me for my birthday. <laughs> Smiley, winky face. Wait, wait, yes, wait, wait, wait. another birthday. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He said, and this should be from both of us. So this is from you as well. Yes. So you need the techie list as well. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> it's the Dutters and the Cars birthday. I'm jumping on. <laughs> jumping on. <laughs> But I decided instead to share this with you. Um, it's called Clad. Oh, it's over at CloudDoc.co. Uh, it's based in Ireland. Lets you share folders between cloud services. For example, a Dropbox, us Dropbox user can share a folder with a Google Drive user without having to use the other service. And there's a demo walkthrough linked here. Uh, it's free and it looks like it's pretty cool. I went and signed up for it real quick. Didn't like get to experiment with it too much today but uh considering like that i dropped over to uh google drive when they made everything so freaking cheap um i'm kind of really interested in this to see if it really works and i'm kind of curious how they're doing this but uh yeah the walkthrough is very it looks kind of convoluted to me uh because i because i dropped off a dropbox but i still have like 20 gigs from all the referrals i've had <laughs> So it's like, wow, I, what am I paying for? Um, so, but but still, I'm running into that. Like somebody had to kick some videos over and had to do it in, in like parts because, you know, it was a little too big and everything. So um, so that's cloud, sorry, clouddoc.co if you want to go check that out and sign up for it. Which makes me wonder, so you're filtering all your personal files and information through this third-party company. You know, how are they going to monetize that thing? Um, so you gotta watch out for that a little bit, but yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, let's see, we talked about Google Glass, virtual reality, man. Found another virtual reality thing this week. Ooh. So of course, uh, you know, uh, Oculus Rift has been in the news because it got bought by Facebook. Uh, Sony has their version. I saw an interesting news article saying, well, so basically, since since Facebook bought Oculus, that just just you know legitimate legitimized 
uh, the Sony version. But there's another one called the Virtuix Omni. You, you guys remember like in the 90s, whenever you see it, like maybe at the mall, like the virtual reality, and you were on this like stand so you wouldn't fall over, you know? Uh, somebody's bringing that concept back. Um, so it's very, it's motion-based. I think there was a Kickstarter that started this off uh, to begin with. So here, there's a video on here of them playing uh, Battlefield 4. And it looks like, I can't figure out what they're kind of walking on there. And, and so it's it's kind of like a, uh, it looked to me like a bunch of spheres, almost like a treadmill. So interestingly enough, this company was on Shark Tank probably... Recently? Three weeks ago. Um, actually, I when it, I don't DVR Shark Tank, but when I, when I, when I get a chance and it's on, I'll, I'll definitely watch. Um, and this company, the Sharks, did not invest in. Wow. Um, and I, I actually personally thought it was a huge mistake. Um, but it, it, the interesting thing about this, so the, virt the when they were on the show, and I don't know how much has changed and how long uh, from taping Shark Tank to when it hits the public, they talked about their Kickstarter campaign on there. Um, they talked about... Um, some places that were interested in, in getting large amounts of these. I could think of like Dave and Buster's um, being a, a, a place that would want 50 of these and you could put a bunch of people in a small confined space all in these little little pod. Oh, it's not a pod, but almost like a little treadmill with a with circle around you um, and let people kind of compete. Um, the one thing they did say is in the, in the that the people on the show brought up, you know, it, the the demo they gave it was actually using an Oculus Rift. Mm -hmm. um, the device does not come with goggles. It does not come with the gun. Um, it doesn't come with much. It's pretty much like the treadmill that can then plug into some different. So um, they're more like an accessory. Yeah, this is more of an it's a, an it's accessory a to the accessory. accessory that you need you need some space in your house for. One of the things I thought was this is one of those things that you could probably get your parent into buying um, based on the fact that, you know, it's it's a connect type thing or whatnot where you're where you're going to be moving. You're going to kind of get some exercise. You do have to actually buy their shoes as well. Um, <laughs> they got all so kinds of buy in on this thing. <laughs> yeah. So so it, it, it is definitely a start with this and keep buying accessories um the one cool thing that they when, when you kind of run if you notice that person in the video running they're actually pushing up against that ring so that's what actually keeps you kind of upright and and i think when they showed it when they showed someone from the shark tank just jump into it it took them a while to get used to mm -hmm. the virtual reality and the running like they kind of fell forward, but because that bar was there, they were able to kind of hold themselves up in place and keep running with it. So I, I think it's definitely an interesting concept. I could see it taking off. Um, I did hear on another podcast where they were where they were talking about this device, and um, they were saying that it actually caused it, it was great for about three to five minutes and then it caused an excruciating headache jeez oh, and that's the problem with I've, a lot of these yeah which i've heard a lot about um the the, the any of the goggles there there it has to do something with the way that the mind perceives motion obviously if you're i think if you're if you're prone to motion sickness it's definitely going to be a problem but it also has to do with something in the way uh, frames per second and what you actually see in frames per second and these devices aren't keeping up um, with how your mind interprets video, which can, can cause a lot of people headaches. So mm -hmm. I, 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 th I think it's something that can be fixed through software or, or hardware updates in the future, but it's definitely keep this in mind before you, you rush out and buy one, not to mention the amount of space it's going to take up in your house, especially if you have more than one kid that's going to want to use this at a time. And that's you know, that's a problem with them because you, yeah you have your your vision needs to sync up with the rest of your senses right um, and I think I talked about this when they were making a lot of noise on Kickstarter a bit but the the technology that um, 
projectors that they had for uh, uh, that, that that actually they started developing over a valve and they actually let the person go and let her take the technology with her this cast AR technology um, I always thought that was interesting because it seemed to solve that problem a little bit because you're actually looking through shutter glasses at and, and, and in this case this video that I found real quick here there's a surface and whenever you look at that surface it's actually um, if you see the goggles here it's actually projecting like actually light projecting onto the surface and then the shutter glasses are given the 3d effect so in the end like since you're actually looking at a surface mm -hmm. and interpreting that i'll see if they can find an example of like how it's actually working um it you know your your body kind of makes up for the rest of the sense issues and has that 3d perspective and you don't have as much of a six i think i think people that maybe have a problem with 3d glasses in general are still going to have a problem and that's a problem with all of this is, is is some people just can't deal with this extra sensory uh uh stuff and i, I until that problem gets solved i can't see a lot of it cashing on you know those, those I, people we can't just even lay down I, what's that go, i said those people just need to go lay down go take a nap well, I can't go see a 3D movie with my wife because of these issues. So, so uh, I, I don't think she'll like it if I just say go take a nap. And, and one of the things I've heard that, that we may see something by the end of summer is um, some major breakthroughs in glassless 3D. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting if if that'll Wasn't, solve. Isn't the uh, well, one we already had that with the Nintendo 3DS? I think the 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 rumored Amazon phone. Yeah, that's is supposed that's to where, have I, this. where I saw. Um, and one of the spec devices that's supposedly leaked has six cameras on it. So I don't know what that's all about. I don't know. They're, they're all, everybody's everybody's R and Ding this right now. Everybody. And we. I would be amazed if the next within the next three years we don't have a solution to the three D virtual reality, especially with somebody like Facebook throwing money at the problem. They're going to figure something out. They know this is not. This is. 1.0 you know beta you know who knows stuff and and they're 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 trying to solve the problem so they can because the the one that solves the problem is going to win and and win huge i think and right now nintendo's the only one with a kind of a viable option and they even have a 2d version so whatever that means awesome and i just lost chilla yeah. <laughs> Looks like everybody left. He was done. Bye, Chilla. He was done. Okay, I'll hold on to this because I definitely want to. And that's another one for him, too. That's another one for him, too. Do you have any in here, Tyler? <laughs> so I try to get him oh, back. No. <laughs> How do you do it? I, I heard you did uh, I heard you do a Siri <laughs> accident over there. I was there. like, oops. Um, I'm doing pretty well over here. I finally got the, um, I got my iTunes set up. And like I said, I had to go to I forget already. <laughs> um, an interesting fact, I will, with my experience with setting up my phone, which I thought was kind of interesting, is on my Gmail, I have the two-step verification process that you can go in and set up, which is kind of a pain in the butt to set up to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, but I went in and set that up. And when we went to import my contacts from the new phone, my into my new phone, Google kept tossing back that the, my password was incorrect. My Gmail password was incorrect. And I can't even tell you how many times I entered it before it was just like something is not right so i ended up having to go back into google reset my password which mm. if you've ever reset a google password it is also incredibly insane if you forget your password because there's a number of questions they ask you uh, email addresses that you send to frequently folders name of folders so i reset it and then i went back in and it still was not letting me log in it turned out the two-step verification process was the reason that it was kicking me out from setting up my uh, email on my new phone <laughs> So it made me look like a big dummy <laughs> when we were in the Verizon store because they kept asking me if I had my cell phone or my email address or my email password. And I was correct. It wasn't me. It was Google. <laughs> I'm already becoming one of those Apple people frowning on Google. I don't really mean it. I love you, Google. And well, in the end, so you're probably going to still be very much into Google. Mm -hmm. And you're and so this is the problem I've needed to solve. Maybe this will be a good mm -hmm. thing for you to start with. Do you use like auto backup on like Google Plus yes. and everything? Yeah. Set that up on your iPhone because mm -hmm. um, I've had because um, I, I I set this up so like this is the only thing where I'll go to Instagram and for one of my business clients um, whenever I'm in, in there I'll, I'll for the day I'll just log into Instagram here mm -hmm. but I'm taking the pictures on my phone because it's a better camera mm -hmm. so I just go ahead and let it upload everything into Google uh, 
you know, Google Plus photos. And then eventually it'll be on here and I can just pull all the photos into Instagram on the account I need to. So I have that kind of cross platform nice. thing. So like anything, so, so in the long run, anything goes into Google from my phone mm -hmm. anyways. And that just makes the whole world better as far as that goes. Well, the concern was with the way I, like I said, I've had Androids for so long is, is I use Google Hangouts in their chat constantly to talk to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And the question was whether or not I was still going to be able to utilize it. And it's been exciting for me because I've been able to, I've been messaging everybody going, Hey, look, I'm on chat. I'm getting notifications. You can still talk to me and, and be my friend. But it's, it's definitely a, a completely, it's a change. And like you said, Google connects things pretty well across mm -hmm. the board. And I'm, I'm just installing Google plus now to see how that's going to work and hopefully get my backups. Cause I, I have a lot of good pictures on my, plus <laughs> this this was this recent tech issue has apparently started a war in the chat room uh uh apparently apparently chiller froze Aww. on his end but it's, it just looked like it disappeared on us and kraus points out that well uh my windows pc did not have the issues <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> thanks kraus. thanks kraus um, hey you know i'm looking actually looking at windows pcs to populate repopulate these these hangout computers mm -hmm. Just because they're cheap, mm -hmm. you know, and it would, if it was compatible, I would get Chromeboxes in an instant, mm -hmm. um, if if they were compatible with the system I'm using here. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I'm actually looking into the i7 little mini. The the what? The, the little Mac minis. The um, not the i7. What is it? The little one of the newer versions of the Mac. Just minis. just Mac minis, but yeah. The, yeah, they have i7, i7 uh, core i7s and stuff. Okay, so I would, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just, yeah, uh, I have not bought a uh, new computer or laptop in 500 years, and this is <laughs> this is me. Look, I look like I'm drifting into the future here. You're I'm just scared. like you're just like reintroducing yourself. Chilla, awesome. he's back. Oh, good. I, I am back. We missed you. Which is so so if you if, if you interestingly funny enough, um, let me screen share this real quick. Um, can you see my screen? Is it there, it's coming. Yeah, there we go. So, so here is what here is what um, Google Chrome is telling me. Google Plus, the app is currently unre unreachable. <laughs> yeah, I get that too. I get that a lot too. And and I, I, I'm not going to close and reopen Chrome. Mm -hmm. But trusty Firefox to the rescue because <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I'm using. And so we, it was funny because I had like two or three different um, uh, things going here. I had two or three different, um, what's it called? Uh, Gmail accounts logged in through through Firefox. So it, it really confused that as well. Yeah, Chrome yeah, needs cool. to. I, you, and, and, and I have somebody I work with that actually works on a Chromebook. And when mm -hmm. like Chrome is the issue, it gets really frustrating. Because you have no other option <laughs> at that point. Because I, I, I know I, I keep, I make sure I have all the browsers installed on my Macs to make sure, like, okay, this is a site that I have problems with Chrome. Or for some reason, WordPress on my own business site runs really, really slow on Chrome. But if I jump over to Safari or Firefox, it's quick. Hmm. Um, it's, it's really weird when it comes to those things. Um, yeah. Speaking of cross-platform, as we, we, we just took a moment to, uh, I don't know if you saw on the stream, uh, talking about uh, moving the phones. So uh, so the thing I wanted to get you back for, uh, and I think you, you are actually, you may be, uh, between you and AJ, I think we're talking about this on Twitter already. Amazon buys Comixology. Mm -hmm. My response is, what took them so long? I'm sure it had to do with probably money. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, as does everything else. I mean, just on principle, because Comixology is like the to me, it was the Kindle for comic books as far as a, a platform. And of course, of course, Comixology was you know on all the platforms. It was on Kindle. It was on iPhone. It's on. It's on everywhere. You buy your comics here, you will have access to it everywhere uh now i got i've gone a different route with uh marvel unlimited and they're just finally getting to that point of quality uh especially in the frame the frame that they do mm -hmm. excuse me uh that i expected out of comiXology so this makes sense it's the top publishing platform for all these it, it, it makes sense for amazon to buy these guys much like it made sense for them to buy audible 
So do you think you'll be getting a, a back a backlog of of free kind of that that concept of how they do with their if you if you're a Kindle owner you get a, some free books every month. Do you think you'll be seeing back catalog of um, free comics? No. For Prime members? No. 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 Why not? Because the publishers. Uh, the the publishers I I I sat in on a couple of them when they were talking a, year, a couple of years ago when they were talking about digital publishing. Um, they I mean look at the progress of digital publishing with the comic books. Um, they are very very gun shy. Yeah, they have like Marvel Unlimited now, but that's just Marvel. DC doesn't have anything equivalent, and I really can't see them doing too much of that. You know, I I. I I would be very surprised if it became a regular thing. And if they did, to me, as a comic book fan, I think it would be so spotty, I wouldn't care. Because you wouldn't care what? I, 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 I wouldn't care if it was an option. Um, because, like, the way I read comics, it's like I need to be able to read through comics now when i go to marvel unlimited i know i can read through an entire series up until a certain point which is about six months six months ago right mm -hmm. and i know and i sit there for me monday is new comic book day but new comic book day for me are the comic books that everybody else went to midtown comics on you know six months ago for you know okay. i'm catching up i'm just now in the middle of battle of the atom which was i think last summer's event maybe uh for the x-men I'm really enjoying it, by the way. Um, and 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 I have my books that I'm reading through and everything. And I go back and say, ah, let's go see. Let's go back and see what the Superior Spider-Man stuff was about. And go get caught up on that. And go get caught up on this other thing. And go see what this Avengers title is about. I'm getting started on Guardians of the Galaxy uh, from the last reboot. You know, to catch up before the movie comes out. Um, you know, that... I just don't see anything satisfying in that way coming out from uh the publisher relationship with amazon uh from this comiXology uh connection that's my opinion i mean it could, i could be completely wrong but i i just don't expect that from them i just don't know why they wouldn't give give someone to get them in there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or get that additional user. you'll have random i mean you'll have i mean i think you'll have random free issues but i think i don't think that's I don't think it's something it, it's hey here's the first three issues of captain america it's just so hopefully you'll buy the rest of them sure which yeah that's what all this th stuff means because you keep getting oh i need to read the next issue of superior spider-man to see what happens well i could wait a month for them to finally release the issue from six months ago or i can click that little thing and buy it for a dollar 99 digitally and it's going to push me over to their comiXology marvel app most likely um but it's a little broader i can i can survive and read enough and be satisfied within the ecosystem that i'm paying 10 bucks a month for um versus versus this prime thing i just don't i i don't think they'll have anything equivalent i i think if they do it's just not going to be substantial but they say the books the books is pretty rough with selection too if you're on prime for that now i don't own a kindle so i'm i don't have access to that even though i have access to all the video and everything on prime so, but I hear, I hear it's not really worth it. Awesome. Uh, tell me about Jarvis on Raspberry Pi. So that was the one <laughs> I was interested in. I'm interested in home automation. And it was a way... <laughs> Sorry, wrong one. <laughs> wrong one. What's that? I, I put on Dutters. <laughs> I just started nothing along to your words. <laughs> I felt it was appropriate. Uh, <laughs> It's like a ventriloquist. <laughs> um, so, so it, it, someone's taken and built built some app application for Raspberry Pi that that will let you do some custom code, and you can use your Raspberry Pi to automate a bunch of things around your house. It's something I'm interested in because I've tried with a, a Windows machine and a bunch of VB script and and batch mm -hmm. files and all kinds of crazy cobbling together of of tools and utilities um, to give you that ability to turn on and off lights or set the thermostat or, or anything like that. So I mean, for, for a whopping $39, what am I really, if it doesn't work or I can't figure it out, 
I can always load XBMC on it and make it a streaming media box. So uh, I'm thinking about definitely giving it a whirl um, and hopefully hoping that there, there's a there's a community kind of out there for it. So I'm hoping I can get a lot of use out of it. So I think I'm going to invest my $39 in a Raspberry Pi and, and see what I can do with it. You do need a USB mic, but I, I, I have a couple of those lying around. So that's Man. not a huge... I just had, you know, you just you just kind of sparked that into my head. I need to check in on the Skype Raspberry Pi project and see how. Oh, is there is there a Skype Raspberry? There Pi? was, there was, there was a presentation a while ago. Um, it looked like it was still pretty janky though. But if to get those, and if I move over to a system where we're doing this over like a direct input that I can install a few cards in, in uh, now that I have a computer I can do that to. Mm -hmm. And then instead, because your, your feed's coming over Desktop Presenter, which is coming over the network. And, and it gets a little, like, typically what I see here is not as good as what I'm actually seeing on your computer, right? Okay. And I have yeah. issues with some other things, like on the Mac, it's always delayed. I don't know why, doesn't matter which one it is, but it's always delayed on a Mac, even when it's like a newer newer Mac. Do you think it's that? Do you think it's desktop presenter doing that? I'm pretty sure it's like a it's it's a desktop presenter issue. So I'd like to get to the point where we're just directly pulling your video from these computers or another computer, and then I'm not dependent on that platform. Like I was talking before about uh, being dependent on a platform issue with desktop presenter not being compatible with like Chrome boxes. I could potentially mm -hmm. use. Um, but the idea that I could just grab a bunch of $35 Raspberry Pis, throw a Skype thing on it, and just connect that with everybody, that's kind of a cool idea. I, I don't know. The, the only thing I know, Microsoft recently, well, and, and by recently, I mean within the last couple of months, I thought they said that they were going to discontinue their APIs to allow third-party companies to make and they would do that wouldn't they clients. they would wouldn't they uh so so there goes that maybe i can well, it, it, it may work and in, in fact skype's coming out with a box yeah. meant for podcasting yeah and, yeah and, uh they're gonna media i i saw this i'm sure it's way out of my price range which is not, which is like negative zero um <laughs> but uh <laughs> how far is negative zero from positive zero uh, it looks like a baseball f or a football field from here, from <laughs> from th from this angle. I I'll tell you that. So, um, I mean, come on, we get paid in pizza around here, you know, and we're lucky on that one. Uh, so, slice on Broadway, check them out. <laughs> I, I may I may have I got to go through a. I'm looking at two laptops right now. I don't know what the processors are in them. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, we have, we have talked about this, but yes. Most of what happens down here is based on donations. I didn't pay mm -hmm. for that monitor. I didn't pay for that monitor. Thanks for that one, by the way, Chilla. Your, your, oh, no your arm thing. That helped out earlier a lot that's going on. on this Which monitor. one? Is that the Dell one or is the that Dell, a different one? The Dell arm crazy thing. Mm -hmm. So, like, like most of this, this studio, most of this wonderful video you see is donation-based. So Now, what would and, – and pardon my ignorance. What would Skype – get you that you're not getting through hangout with desktop presenter are you talking about um like about this broadcasting or putting it on a raspberry pi or on the raspberry pi or any of those oh, any just, of the there's no preference on there it's just a you know that's a cheap solution that i could just stack a bunch of those connect them through and you know, and what would you do hdmi out into your switcher that's kind of the idea that okay. well I would have to get some black magic cards or boxes or something to HDMI through because I want everybody, everything to eventually be pure. The best picture we have, because I, this is getting into a whole other technical thing, but I guess this is the place to do it. Um, the way Wirecast is right now, um, they, the only reason you have HD video from this camera, because this camera is not Firewire. This is a $30 Logitech camera. Okay. And so is uh, that one over there. <laughs> and they look amazing, don't they? And we're actually recording 720, you know, HD. And I was like, you know, great. It looks, it looks fantastic. And now I pull over to you, you know, it's, uh, you know, a little, little sketchy, you know. Uh, and the biggest issues uh, I have, it's not really Hangouts fault or anything. It's just I don't have fast enough computers for it. And it really, uh, Hangout is a huge processor whore. Mm -hmm. Huge resource hog. 
Um, and that's why we've kind of cycled out some of the older ones. Order, older ones failed. There's a Pentium D over there, just decides not to boot anymore. Um, you know, that, that kind of thing. So I, I'm actually looking at, um, and you saw the tweet the other day, I was looking for yeah. smaller machines that we can just kind of stack so I don't have this kind of weird array of desktops sitting around. Um, so we can just stack them up, plug them in. They're running desktop presenter. They're a pretty good clip. I figured maybe like an i3 would be enough for, for the time being. Because I cause I don't need I don't need to push an HD signal from these computers. I just need to receive it from you. Mm -hmm. And right now, you're sitting on a tri-core AMD laptop that originally ran Vista. What about a NUC? What's a NUC? The um, Intel Next Unit of Computing Kit. I th I saw a couple of those, but they didn't look like they could, they came with proce processors. Um, so that's the that's pretty much the only thing they come with. Okay. So like this one I'm looking at right now is two sixty six ninety eight on Amazon. It's an i three mm -hmm. with gigabit LAN, dual HDMI out. Yes. Um, I, I, so these it doesn't it doesn't come with so the processors in there. Okay. The, the, the trick is usually, I would say, two times out of five. Um, so what is that? Forty percent or whatever. So here's, here's um, they're, 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 you're not going to get memory. Okay. That's, you, that's not a problem. May or, you may or may not get um, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Not a problem. And you may or may not get something to write to like. Um, SSD, not so terribly a problem. There, there's where there's where you may get into some problems, but I think you're seeing um, so fully built. I think this one's this comes with like if you want 64 gig of M SATA, it's an extra hundred bucks. But I don't need a lot. That's the, the thing. I don't right. need because all I'm doing is just going to sit there. It's running an OS and it streams. There's going to be yeah, and you can get some of these. These um, there's additional ones that are new. They're they're, they're big on Amazon and Newegg, mm -hmm. um, but they're about the size of an Apple TV. And it would be tremendous if um, these could get to a point where I can, like, maybe some of them become. These are ones we take to places to make those connections. You know, mm -hmm. like the reason I would have a Mac Mini, but again don't have a budget for a Mac Mini. In my perfect world, I would just buy a stack of Mac Minis and we'd be done with it. But again, negative zero budget, you know. Um, and maybe that'll change, you know. Uh, we have some new projects coming up that may fund it. We don't know. We're working on those logistics right now. So, but the, so I am looking at the point where we're not just like, hey, here's a bunch of computers that I have acquired over the years and we'll get the most out of it that we can let's actually look into what do we need to do to make this look as good as possible still under budget but at least like dedicating some hardware for it so i have to drag my poor macbook down here you know <laughs> i mean remember the longest time i just took my i brought my mac mini down here every week the mac mini i edit documentaries and crap on and brought it down here wirecast and the night i carry it back up and start editing you know, I was just like, okay, we need to get something down here, um, and and we and we did, and we got a Lenovo, and uh, other than my absolute hate for Windows 8, and it's been a little more crashy uh, than I like. Uh, Wirecast mostly works. Cool, cool. Yeah, you're, these these devices are, are pretty much ranging anywhere from like 150 up up to, and you're maxing you're you're maxing out at like five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollar devices or i5 has wells with mm -hmm. 512 gig of, of the SATA SSD. I mean, 8 gig, 8 gig, 16 gig of RAM. So, I mean, if you're looking something in the i3 range, I, I think you could do, here's one for like 388 prime shipped. And it's, it's pretty well built out. And the, just the size of it 
And this has four USB three ports. This this uh, this is this is uh, this thing happening in the chat room right now is exactly how the studio comes together. This is this is <laughs> such a community, literally community built studio. Because um, right now Doug's in there asking about getting rid of a monitor because his wife wants it out of the basement, and that usually <laughs> ends up here. You know how many? You haven't been here for a few weeks. You know how many TVs are down here now? Um, it's pretty crazy. Uh, it's. Uh, but pretty fantastic that we're, we've been able to do this. Would you like an EMAC? Would I like an EMAC? You already <laughs> asked me. Yes, I want. It. Did you? Do you see the IMAX sitting over? There? Let's see what a friend. <laughs> well, it's not exactly what you call small. And <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's fine. I, especially like old Macs like that because I'm fascinated by that because mm -hmm. I didn't get into Macs until 2006 ish. So um, and I absolutely hated them when I was in school. So I avoided them at all costs. So, all right, on that note, I think we've gone long enough with this. Now that we've pontificated at the technology that's running this show, we got completely met on you guys here. Um, <laughs> these are conversations we're going to have later. Also, I have is a 32-port router in my basement, still in box. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and chill I just finally got through the box you sent me last time. <laughs> is the Amazon thing up on the website? Uh, where I can, where no matter what I buy from Amazon, it yes, it, it is. Goes um, back to you. Do we, okay, here's more inside baseball. Amazon.com is not pointing at the right, or awesomecast.com is not pointing at the right thing right now. Uh, okay, I need to contact the person that owns that domain that's no longer on the show and see if I can get that figured out. Um, it worked. It used to work. I don't know what happened. So now it just goes to a category that shows all the shows on, on the main site. But if you go to circuitronmedia.com slash awesomecast, it has all those links. That's the awesomecast site. Sorry about that. Um, but we'll see about fixing that here uh, in, in, in the near future. So if I make sure when I buy coffee every month. Yes, go click that Amazon link. <laughs> and I wonder what happens if you subscribe to coffee. Through is there. there a way? Is uh, can I copy this and email it somewhere? <laughs> the link? Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's probably not illegal. Well, no, I need to send it to myself at work because I do all my ordering from my work computer. No, actually, I think if you copy the link, it, because the, the, the token for my account is actually in the link. The link code yeah. equals. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I can, I, I can help you bring Hopefully, I can... So I think if you click, because the ad I have on there, why, why are we doing this on the show? <laughs> the ad I, the ad I, people watching and listening to the show should help us out. There you go. Well, the ad I have on there kind of cycles through. Like I pulled it up and it has a Kindle ad. Um, but I think if you go through there and just buy anything, as long as you click that link, um, okay. it should just accept anything. So there's that. And also check on our friends, our uh, Slice on Broadway, you know, that have been supporting us the way we do get paid on this show and others um, in our bellies uh, here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. Um, so with that, uh, uh, is there any uh, events coming up we should mention? Uh, tech Cocktail. Thursday. Thursday. Dutter is myself and the wife of the show will be here. Be there. Mm -hmm. So Excited. Do we wear cocktail attire? Do I need a dress? I don't know. Can I wear sequins? <laughs> I'll bring my new friend the phone. <laughs> yes. You can make a new friend and say, how do I use this? <laughs> what Twitter clients do you use? Help. <laughs> oh, yeah. Twitter isn't bad. Twitter itself. Twitter ethic. I don't know. What Twitter client did you use on your Plume. Android device? What was it called? Plume. Was it? Is that? Is there, I guess there's no iOS version. I, hmm. Hmm. Did you search the app store? No. I just didn't know if there was one that was better. She's had it for like an hour. <laughs> like literally went from the waterfront to here. So Plume Plume is available from what I see on Ooh. iOS. There you go. Plume. I'm Google. I'm, well, I'm not Googling. Wow. I'm going to say everything is Googling now. I started looking it up in the app store and the first thing that comes up is plumber crack. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that plumber crack. I don't think that's an app. I okay, any other events coming up, Chili? We should talk about. And that, I don't. I didn't see anything big coming up from that's not months out. I. I mean, you got you're we're, you're you're now you're, we're hitting the lull till June when WWDC hits at the beginning of the month and we close out the month with uh, Google's I/O. Microsoft just got out of their build conference. I haven't seen anything. To me, 
big and huge um, coming out in the media. All right. It well, seems like it seems like everybody's waiting or is going to answer back the S5 launch last week. Everybody's first. holding their breath. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. Uh, Chilla is at Chilla on the Twitter. Is he going to hit him up and, uh, you know, tell him your thoughts on, on things? Uh, Dutters is at K Dutters. She's looking for at help and iPhone help. So so send your <laughs> s- send your assistance or your fanboy hate for having jump ship to the Apple device. Yes, please, please. And uh, <laughs> look forward into the future when we test this guy. <laughs> what? The well, life proof. <laughs> So this is the uh, hopefully it get it survives your phone six through the gathering of the jugglers. Yes, six feet per. You, and and we, we said you should have asked. Does that um, is it soda proof? Yes, we'll find out. We're gonna find I can drop it from six foot, six point six feet above too. We'll do all kinds of experiments. I'm sorry, iPhone. I'm glad I got some sort of car- I got the I got the insurance. It's okay. Oh God. Not Apple Care. You got insurance. Insurance. Yeah, I should probably get that before I go. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Verizon. And of course, you can join us here on this, whatever the heck this was the last couple hours, uh, at live.sorgatronmedia.com or just go to sorgatronmedia.com, awesomecast.com if it starts working. Um, and you can join us at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time uh, in the chat room, just like everybody else. A lot of people in there today. A really hop in chat room tonight. Thank you very much. Um, of course, uh, you can find us at AwesomeCast on Twitter. We're on Google+. Plus. We're on uh, Facebook as well. Uh, we're available on iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, Spreaker, Stitcher, all kinds of places. And, of course, thanks to the great Michael Allen at Mike Allen PR, helping with the notes and tweets. I think he's tweets. I don't know who's doing the Twittering right now. Because <laughs> somebody wasn't, said they couldn't, and I didn't get an acknowledgement that somebody else was doing it. So mystery person might be doing the twi- tweets right now. So, um, so. But thanks to Mike Allen uh, for helping us out. Um, again, a community effort, and and he's one of the guys that makes sure um, it's not garbly gook when I try to put these things together at three in the morning. So, uh, until then, we'll see you guys next time uh, to our uh, awesome, awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. We're